Good morning. Today we're going to talk about bulbs. We finally got all our bulbs in here at Rogers Garden, so I'm so excited. Uh, it's always that time when we start to actually start thinking about spring, and that's just such a thrilling moment for any gardener. So um, I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. I'm filling in for the lovely Miss Suzanne, uh, who is away on vacation right now. Uh, we are still doing our live streams every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, Tuesday is a garden edition, and Thursday right now is a holiday edition. So you get to see all the fun things that are happening uh, in the Halloween room. Uh, it's so beautiful this year. Uh, and we're actually getting our Christmas ready. So soon you'll start seeing videos for Christmas as well. Uh, so it's a really fun time here at Rogers. Uh, great time with all of our pumpkins and all of our bulbs just came in. Uh, this is the time to buy your bulbs. I always say with bulbs, it's the early bird who gets the worm sort of situation. You want to be able to get first pick at the nicest bulb. Bulb health is really important when you're picking a bulb. So bargain quality bulbs, no good. And they're gonna look like bargain quality bulbs when they come up. So you wanna make sure that you're picking stuff that's really nice, plump, and healthy. And you get the first pick of all the colors you want. So uh, it's it's a long game with bulbs. The way you do it, you come in, you buy all your bulbs now, and then you store them very nicely. Usually you wanna plant most of your bulbs typically like after Christmas, like mid, even around Christmas time is good. So yeah, about December, January, typically here. Um, but you wanna be able to pick everything first and then some bulbs here you have to chill. So uh, if you're from back east uh, and you come out here, the bulb game is very different uh, here. You can't uh, grow tulips year after year after year like you can back east, but there's a lot of things that naturalize really, really well. So if you want to grow things like tulips, um, ranunculas, the um, crocuses, uh, hyacinths, all those bulbs, those need to be chilled. So you're basically tricking them into thinking that the ground has frozen uh, like it does back east uh, and then you're planting them in the nice warm ground and they start to flower right away. Um, those are the bulbs you will have to pull up year after year if you want to continue to grow them. Um, with tulips and stuff here in Southern California, I like to plant them, chilling them. You can get really, really, really amazing colors. I pulled some of my favorite ones. Uh, this morning. Uh, look at this black uh, parrot one. Isn't that beautiful? So, so cool. And this one almost looks like a ranuncula. It's a very double petaled one. So nice, big, healthy bulbs. You'll have to chill these. And then I actually don't pull them up year after year and re-chill them. It's just kind of a lot of pain, <laughs> honestly. So I, I plant them in nice little swifts of uh, pretty ribbons and things like that, but I just let them go. They're not going to come back for me next year. I've grown to accept that. Uh, that's just the reality of planting these. Now there are other things that do come back really nicely, um, but with these you want to chill them uh, for about, they say six to eight weeks. I find that even longer. Um, when you're chilling bulbs, what's really, really important with them is you want to chill them in a paper bag, not in these plastic bags. Don't put them in the plastic bags. Uh, put them in the crisper in your refrigerator and don't put them next to bananas or apples. Um, those uh, emit a kind of gas when they're ripening and that will make these rot. So you wanna make sure that you don't have it next to apples, you don't have it next to uh, any bananas, you have it in a paper bag, so take them out of these plastic bags, put them in a paper bag, and then don't forget about them. <laughs> so set a reminder or something in your uh, calendar in December or January to plant these guys in the ground. Um, if you look at the back of all these two, a lot of things, um, are really particular about the depth so if you flip this over you want to make sure if you do transfer this into a plastic bag that you keep this so you remember how deep to plant your bulbs that's really really important there's a uh, nice little tools uh, that you can use to make holes in the ground that actually have the measurements on there um, I just use an old uh, ruler that was passed down from my grandmother that I still have that I use uh, to make sure that I know how deep I'm planting it. Don't eyeball it because if you plant them too high, uh, they'll flower too soon and the stalk will be really like flimsy and weak and it won't be a really nice bloom. So make sure that you actually are really paying attention to how deep you plant your bulbs. All of them have different requirements. If it doesn't say specifically on here in the back, just Google that information so that way you're doing it right. Um, some of the things that do come back really nicely. So that is something you want to um, chill. Um, I have here the hyacinths you would want to chill as well. Um, but I pulled some of my favorites of the stuff that comes back really well. So this is kind of my new love. These are alliums. This is actually a California native allium. Isn't that cool? I planted uh, probably about four of these last year, they, or not last year, the year before, and they came up really, really beautifully, and I was really, really 
really happy with them. Uh, and then even the flower kind of dries and looks really neat. Kind of looks like a little firecracker. So pretty. I planted it underneath my grape and then I realized when they came up they were so nice. I needed a bunch of them. I think bulbs really make a big impact when you have a bunch. And when I'm planting bulbs the way I like to do it is I like to hold them in my hand and just kind of drop them and then plant them where I drop them. You kind of want it to look a little natural. When you have them in little rows or something that's too contrived looking, when it pops up it's very obvious that you did it on a grid or something like that. So um, last year I grabbed a whole bunch more of them and I planted a lot so it's so pretty because I have kind of this swath of them growing there and it looks really really great. Um, there's also these giant ones, these get really really tall, so cool looking. These are a true bulb so when you flip it around you see that it's a really true bulb um, and it's just so pretty. So um, these ones are a little bit on the shorter side so I'm going to grab myself a couple bags of these ones and back plant it so I have those behind so it has that nice step down. Um, I also think cover crops are really kind of cool when you are doing bulbs um, and that basically just means something that's growing that they can push their way through so I grabbed some of my favorite. Pansies and violas are, are really great. Uh, your bulbs can push up through that and that way you're not looking at just empty ground. It's really nice too if you're doing them in pots. A lot of um, people will do bulb pots and then just plant this on top so you're not just looking at a big bowl of dirt <laughs> basically. So it's nice to have something on top. Um, alyssum actually works really well too because they can push their way through this but this is my favorite color uh, pansy so I just had to grab this one. This is one I've loved forever because field is just so cool and so neat. It almost looks uh, like it's been painted. It's just such a pretty one. Um, so that's a really great little cover crop thing. Um, but some other things that come back really nicely for us, freesias. Freesias smell fantastic too. Freesias come back with a vengeance every single year. Uh, so it's really kind of a great one. Um, and the smell is so cool on a freesia. You can smell them, you know, as you're just walking by them, they're a really strong fragrance. Uh, they're so pretty, almost fruity. I almost say they kind of remind me of fruity pebbles or fruit loops a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but they smell really good. They come in all kinds of really beautiful colors as well. And again, they look really nice when you're just kind of flopping them around in the garden. So as you're walking around, just kind of dropping them here and there, marking that and then planting it right where you dropped it. Uh, that always just looks so nice and natural when you do it that way. Um, Dutch irises, we have some nice Dutch irises and irises have kind of been hard to get recently. So I was really excited to see these Dutch irises. And again, I'm always flipping around and looking at them and making sure they're nice and healthy. And these ones are really good, really plump. They look beautiful. Uh, the color's all very uniform on them. They look really, really nice. So these Dutch irises are gorgeous. Um, and then these ones, we were talking about this this morning. Um, I was asking everybody what their favorite bulb is. Uh, and Tommy, one of our buyers, this is his favorite bulb. But this is so beautiful. And these look like the little um, pretty snowdrop flowers that people are always so excited about that don't really grow well. These grow great and they come back really, really well for us too. Um, so these are a really great one for coming back. But we have all different kinds of things. We have ranunculus in right now. Um, Ranunculus are really great. I don't find that those come back necessarily for me. Um, sometimes I get my foliage back, but it's not one that I find comes back, but it's very inexpensive, so uh, it's a really nice one um, to do, and again, mass planting looks really, really great. And then I grabbed one of these. I love this. This is so beautiful. So uh, this is a collection of different narcissus. Uh, Daffodils do come back pretty well. I find the smaller the flower is on them, the better they come back for me. Um, so sometimes I wind up pulling them out after a couple years, I just get the foliage um, coming up for me. But this is so nice because it's just a bunch of different things all mixed together, so it's pre-planned out. And again, I say to everybody, bulbs are better when you make a big impact. So you want quite a lot of them. Um, and mixing different colors and different styles and stuff together are really nice. But I love that this is all white, but all different sizes. How pretty is this? So this is a really, really great deal. Uh, you get a bunch of different ones uh, in here. I think there's 16 bulbs in total in here. So that would be really great. Uh, nice little impact kind of thing. Um, the other thing that we do here a lot is forcing bulbs. Um, that's one of my all-time favorite Christmas things to do. Uh, I know you're thinking Christmas, we haven't even had Halloween yet, but get your bulbs now because again, once we get closer to the time to actually do it, uh, that's when we don't have as many and that's when you're going through you know, the bend of the bulbs and you're finding all the little ones that are left over. Look how big and beautiful these are. So this is um, gonna be a paper white and paper whites are really, really easy, easy thing to force. They're so pretty, they make a fantastic gift, especially around Christmas time, great hostess gift. Um, but these are huge, so comparatively to the type 
of paper white bulbs and this is just the first one I grabbed. I didn't even grab the biggest one out of the bin. Um, this is a really, really nice size and you're going to get multiple flower spikes off of each one of these instead of just one. Um, so this is where size really matters and this is really important and this is a great nice bulb in here. Um, we also, and I'm going to bend down here and grab this, we're doing this this year and I'm so excited. I don't think we did this last year. Here's a kit. So this has everything you need to do one of these, which is really, really cool. So it's very, very simple to force paper whites. Um, any kind of container that can hold water and rocks. That's all you basically need. I've done them in marbles. I've done them in shells. Uh, I've done it in all different kinds of things, all different kinds of bases, all different kinds of, re any receptacle you can think of that will hold water. Uh, you just throw all of your pebbles, your rocks, your shells, your marbles, whatever you have um, in the bottom. You fill it up with water and you just simply place this on top. You kind of squish it down a little bit into that. Um, and then when you fill the water, if you want it just grazing the bottom of the bulb, you don't want it enveloping the bulb it'll rot um, just grazing the bottom and then they actually start growing down through that and it's amazing uh, so this is a really fantastic gift it's a really fantastic thing to do with kids it's super exciting um, honestly to me paper whites have kind of taken over poinsettias in my house so I always know that it's Christmas time when the paper whites start coming and they smell fantastic so it's such a beautiful classic gift and the size of these you cannot find bulbs this big anywhere else. This is a pretty exclusive thing to Rogers, and um, I adore paper whites, so it's super, super exciting. Um, when you're, let's backtrack a little bit. When you're planting them in the ground, um, you want to fertilize. So I brought two different things here with me. Um, this is bone meal, and this is the rose and flower mix. Both of these work really well. Um, I like to add a little bit of bone meal in the bottom of each hole as I'm planting, um, just a tiny bit. Um, that's gonna get them to store a lot of great stuff inside them to bloom next year as well. And then I side dress through the year um, with the rose and flower mix. So it's a really pretty easy thing all powder. You don't have to put very much. I would say probably maybe two tablespoons per bulb. Um, if you have a big mass planting, like you only should, uh, doing just a nice sprinkle on top there and watering it in. You don't have to mix it in. If you wind up mixing in, you might kind of disturb the bulbs and nick the bulbs. Um, so just kind of water it in and just make it really simple for yourself. Uh, they do all great in pots. Most of these all want really good sun. Some can handle some partial. Um, when you look at these um, bags, they give you all the information that you need. So this will tell you full to partial sun. So these look really beautiful planted underneath trees and stuff. It's just very natural, these giant snowdrops. So, so pretty. I love them so much. And they have this really pretty like little kind of lime green around the tip of the petals. They're just really, really beautiful. But um, they'll tell you uh, what they need. Um, and a lot of these too, deer resistant. So bunny resistant too. Uh, we have not a lot of deer problems around here, but a lot of bunny problems around here. Uh, so you always want to look for that as well. So, um, because we are live, of course, we can answer all of your questions for you. So if you have any questions, put those down below and I can answer those for you. If you came to this later and you didn't watch it live, still add your questions down below and we will answer those questions for you later as well. So, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Thank you, okay. Sarah. Yeah. Can we plant peonies too? Oh. Yes. So we have a new type of peony that works really well here. It's called the Ito peony. Um, we will hopefully get some of the bare roots for those. That's going to be a little bit later. Um, we had such a great response to the Itos last year. Um, I think it was the first year that it really got on everybody's radar uh, that there are peony types that you can do here. They're not like the traditional ones that you're used to seeing um, back east. Uh, but we will probably get some of those bare roots and I'm thinking that's going to be a little bit later in the year and they come in a little box and it's just the roots and you plant those in the ground um, and then they come up. Um, we also were selling some that were all up and already flowering which is really nice so you would get a real vibe of what the color is. Um, sometimes with these pictures they're great but it's always nice to actually see it in person um, but hopefully we'll get some of those in um, things the bulbs even this year for us were a little bit late so um, just like everything else in the world at the moment where we're having some just you know shipping issues and some supply and demand issues bulbs came a smidge late to us uh, I think we were expecting them a, a week earlier than we got them in um, and with those bare roots just keep calling if you're not signed up for the um, email list do so right now because when those come in we will definitely let you know about that there and then of course you're watching this on Instagram or Facebook so you're probably following us there and we usually make those kind of announcements as well on those pages too and then we're so look 
I'm sorry. <laughs> what can be used in the desert? Um, it just kind of depends. Uh, it depends on where you are here. Um, with questions like that, I think it's always best um, get yourself a Sunset Western um, guidebook. Those are amazing. So a lot of the desert questions that get asked here are usually like Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. Um, your zone there, I believe, is a 19, I want to say. I should have that memorized because we do get a lot of desert questions. So there are things that will grow well there. You actually get a little bit colder at nighttime, uh, which is really good for some of the bulbs, uh, but checking it out there and, and cross-referencing your zone um, for uh, what kind of bulbs work is really, really an important thing to do. Um, it's even better than the USDA zones. Like, go through the whole United States, but there's only like 12 for the whole of the United States. Um, but then when you look at the Sunset Western Zone Guide, um, it's 22 just for our coast, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. So there's a lot of differences to really come into play. How hot it gets, how cold it gets, your rainfall, your humidity, all that kind of stuff. So definitely check that out there uh, for specific, or you can always call us. We can always flip through that on the phone and, and find your specific zone um, and let you know what kind of things. And if you it did answer, you know, ask this question, put where you live down below and we can check that out and give you a list of things that will work for you. Can you plant bulbs in a 9A zone? I mean, hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, we're a 9B here, I believe. Uh, so yeah, but the, that's the USDA zone. So that's where you're uh, having less of a zone extreme, basically. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's what you're looking for when you're planting and where you're planting is, do you get freezes? Um, and then how are you watering in that area? You don't want to rot out your bulbs, but we don't have a lot of freezes. So a lot of the bulbs that back east, they dig up every single year. Um, we don't. And the ones that they leave in the ground every single year, we wind up digging up. So uh, we're very opposite and flipped, basically. And it's funny because you think in the fall time, this is when you're planting all and, and buying, not planting necessarily, but buying all of your stuff for spring. And all the stuff for spring you plant in the winter time. Uh, then we're gonna get some of all the things that you plant for your um, summertime blooms. Uh, usually we get those at the end of winter, the beginning of spring. So that's when you're gonna start seeing your dahlias and the like like that. Uh, uh, the lilies, um, all those kind of things. So those will come a little bit later. But you're looking for all the things right now to buy that will flower in spring because you're gonna buy them now, you're gonna store them, you're gonna plant them in the winter time for spring flowers, so uh, it's it's just so fun. It's like it's the time of year when every gardener is like getting all their seed catalogs and kind of dreaming about what they're gonna do uh, in the winter time to prep for springtime. So it's really a great time here in the garden. I love buying the bulbs and just standing there and looking at them all. It's just so amazing. There's like just walls and walls of bulbs in there right now. So the selection is good. So come in soon because it definitely dwindles down pretty quickly. Do you have any greens to plant now? Greens, for eating greens, because this is the time. So right now we're switching over from our summer stuff. Like I still have a couple of summer things straggling in my garden, mostly peppers and some of my eggplants that aren't quite done yet. Uh, but this is the time when you plant um, all the cruciferous stuff. Uh, so the broccoli, the uh, cabbages, the Brussels sprouts, but greens, for eating greens, definitely. That's um, gonna be your Swiss chard, uh, all of your kales and things like that, lettuces. It's a great time for seeds as well for that kind of stuff. So it's a smidge earlier. I haven't got any of my uh, fall winter vegetables in because I'm still kind of straggling on some of my stuff. But if you've already pulled out all of your stuff, you can definitely plant now in seeds, seeds, seeds. There's gonna be some really great seeds uh, for a lot of really fun lettuce varieties. I love the different lettuce varieties that you can get from seed. And seed is so easy for lettuce. I'm not a seed purist by any means. I do a lot of starts, uh, but there's a couple of things in the veggie gardens that I really like doing from seed just because they're easy and you can get better variety uh, and some better tastes and stuff like that as well. Which bulbs need to be refrigerated again? Okay, so I actually wrote down a little list specifically because I don't do all the refrigerated ones because I'm a lazy gardener. I guess I tell you this all the time. I really truly am. Um, but uh, crocuses, um, daffodils can actually be refrigerated, not totally necessary, but when you're buying new daffodils, might as well throw them in a paper bag and go ahead and refrigerate them anyways. Um, that way you remember that you have them in there and you don't forget, where did I put those bulbs? I've done that so many times, it's really kind of sad. 
Um, tulips, of course, um, you want to get at least six to eight weeks, but even longer is okay. Um, some narcissists do well with um, getting them into the refrigerator as well. So if you're already doing bulbs and you're putting them in the refrigerator, you might as well put your daffodils and your narcissus. Not 100% necessary, um, but they will do okay with that. You might as well keep them all together so you're not losing them. Um, and then the big thing is paper bags uh, and don't put them next to apples or bananas. <laughs> so that will um, actually rot them out by doing that because of the gaps. Uh, that they admit. Um, it's just like the trick of putting uh, unripe avocado with a banana in a paper bag to get that to ripen. Same thing will happen with your bulbs. So do not put them next to apples or bananas. Make sure they're in paper bags. Do not store them in these bags. Uh, store them in paper bags. Um, but keep this so you remember what it is. Um, it has all the depth and all the habit and like where it needs to be and all that kind of stuff. So you want to make sure you keep this piece of paper for sure. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Someone was asking about what you said to look for in reference to rabbit problems. Okay, so a lot of these, if you look through them, they will tell you if um, they're deer resistant. Uh, so deer resistant usually, not always, but usually also equates to being rabbit resistant. So there's quite a few on here that have that little deer resistant thing here on the bottom. Um, you might still wanna Google it, but uh, if the deers won't eat them, usually the rabbits won't eat them either. Um, the problem I have, and I don't really have a big um, rabbit problem, thankfully, uh, but I do have a lot of squirrels and the squirrels figured out where I planted some of my bulbs last year and pulled them up and ate them. <laughs> I was so mad. Um, so I had to put down some um, netting. I just took some of the um, bird netting that I used to wrap around some of my tomatoes uh, because I, I get squirrel problems and rat problems with my uh, tomatoes. Um, but I put that netting down and I just put uh, little spikes to hold it down so they couldn't dig through there. They were not happy with that. <laughs> and they even tried to kind of pull up a corner. Um, but yeah, they pulled up a bunch of my bulbs last year. It made me really mad. Um, the cover crops too, adding something like this over where you plant it will sometimes help. Uh, sometimes those suckers are real smart and they'll just pop those right out of the ground and put their little hands right onto your bulb and pull that out and go, thank you <laughs> for the nice little bulb. So, uh, putting a cover crop or adding something over that if you have a squirrel problem uh, might be helpful. Um, and then checking the bottom of these for the things that say they're deer resistant, the alliums too, uh, deer resistant, usually alliums, uh, rabbit resistant as well in my experience too. So yeah, look for that on the bottom of each one of these bags. I know that's a really big problem around here as, as rabbits. Yeah. Okay, that seems to be all the questions for today. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's always fun. Uh, bulb time is always so exciting. It's that hint that spring is coming. Uh, it's so nice to walk through there and see all that different stuff and pick your stuff early. I try to tell everybody this all the time. I had uh, somebody last year, and I still think about him. He went by. He really wanted the giant um, alliums. Uh, he even came up and talked to me about it a little bit. He walked around the store. He came back, and they were gone already. And he was so heartbroken and I felt so bad because we usually don't get a lot of restocks on bulbs and the giant alliums never came back in. And I know he was really sad about that. So grab your bulbs now, uh, store them in your refrigerator, paper bags, uh, put a reminder in your phone so you don't forget. Um, make sure you remember what they look like too. And you don't put them next to where you have your garlic or your onions because these look a lot like garlic. So you don't want to accidentally eat one of these. Uh, it won't taste very good. Uh, so anyways... Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really enjoy doing these with you guys. Uh, make sure you tune in too for our Thursday edition as well. Um, we are going to be doing a live in-store too. It's going to be the monthly checklist of things to do in the garden. Uh, so we do an in-store um, version of this. We still put it on Instagram and put it on um, our Facebook page. Uh, but if you come in person, you actually get a 10% coupon to use in the store that day for any of the things we talk about. So it's really exciting. Uh, so make sure you come in for that and see us here in person. If you can't, you can always tune in on the Facebook and the Instagram page. Also sign up for that uh, email list. That way you'll know when all the things come in. You'll know about all the new stuff, all the dates for openings and things like that as well. Um, and you can check out our YouTube page. We have a lot of really, really great videos there. Uh, new stuff there all the time. You can go back through old stuff. Specifics for different things too. I know uh, Steve Hampton has done a lot of really great videos on specific plantings for tulips and different daffodils 
daffodils and stuff there. So you can always check that out and get more specifics and a little bit more technical on how to plant and when to plant and all that. Uh, those are really great videos to check out too. So again, be well, be safe and happy gardening. Thanks.